Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the uh, Brooder Cat Skid Steer um, build. In the first video, we got it disassembled, we got the sprockets made, we got the servos mounted, and we got this thing driving. Um, again, I talked about in the first video that I'm not happy with the speed of these servos, so I'm gonna up, uh, swap them out for a little bit higher speed servo. Um, I do have these same servos I used in the uh, D11 build, so I'll probably get that swapped out. But this video is going to be focusing on the uh, the loader portion of this. So we have the loader that we're obviously going to add the raise to and then the bucket tilt. So we're going to address that. I believe we're going to be putting a um, one of these servos uh, mounted down in here to run an arm that will basically hook to this. So the servo horn will be hooked to a connecting link that will run this up and down. Uh, but before I start that, I'm actually going to try to work on the bucket first. And so I want to be able to control this bucket. So I did a little bit of playing with this, you know, I want to prepare a little bit for these videos. And so my idea is I'm going to use a micro server, micro servo. I always want to say server. Nope, this is not a computer server. This is a uh, micro server MG90S. Um, I've had luck with these on other projects. And the idea is I'm gonna just mount it kind of down in here. So the thought I went to is I have this servo horn that's just kind of one half. And I went ahead and I first super glued it in there just to kind of get the placement right. Uh, and then I put two screws connecting the servo horn to the bucket itself. And I lined up the center rotation of that horn to what would be the center line of the pivot of this bucket. So that horn is a readily attached to this backing plate and technically it's not on the bucket because you can take the bucket off you know swap it out for say um the fork attachment or one of the other attachments pop it off there and it's actually attached to this quick attach plate so we can see it mounted right up in there so i'll go ahead and put the bucket on there for effect so buckets on uh, and so to make this mount easier I went ahead and designed a mounting plate, kind of show it to you there, for the uh, for the boom. So I got a couple supports I got to kick out of there. I thought I had them all out. So kick the supports out. And the idea here is this, we're going to, I'll probably glue it on initially just to kind of hold it in place, but then add a couple screws in here and it's going to fit right up underneath there. So. From the front, you don't even hardly see it. You know, that black piece of plastic doesn't really stand out. Um, but you look on the back side, and it kind of has a cradle where the servo can fit. So I did notch out this little portion of the servo. Um, I wanted some extra meat in this bracket that I printed, and this would have gotten the way of it. So the idea here is I will click the servo into there, and then twist it around. It'll kind of fit in these rests, so this bracket will be screwed into there. It'll fit in these rests, and I'll add a screw to that for a, uh, like an anti-rotation. And let me go ahead and try this out. I'll just kind of hold it in place. Let me hook it up to my receiver. Okay, so that's plugged in. And I will just, for right now, hold it with my thumb. Let's see. And which... I've got it plugged into channel three. Oh, I'm not... Oh, I'm not connected to my... It might help if I turn the power supply on. There we go. Brain fart. Turn the power on. You usually get farther with, with juice. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of hold the servo here um, like it would be. And, oh, my finger's kind of getting in the way. And I need to adjust the uh, rotation so it comes back all the way. Like, I don't necessarily need it to dump that far. I'd probably rather have it dump about right there. So, but all I got to do is basically pull this motor out. Change the rotation a notch or two, then test again. That was too far. I need to go the other way. Uh, 
Oh, now I'm definitely smashing my finger. But that's gonna give me pretty decent control over the bucket. Say hi, wave, there we go. So this should be actually a pretty easy install. Um, like I said, I'm gonna glue this in initially to hold it in place. Then I'm gonna add a couple screws on each side to hold it there. And then I'll just put one screw there. So if something happens to the servo, you know, that can be changed out in a matter of minutes. Um, I will probably make some notches in this arm and then push it down in there and hot, uh, hot glue it down in there. That's kind of what I've done uh, in other builds when I want to hide this wire. Uh, I will be trimming off this tab here because I don't want it to interfere with the ground of that. So I'll trim that tab off there. And then when I buy these, I buy them in like a pack of eight. Um, it's just much more cost effective to buy them in bulk. And so I've, I use these little things on multiple projects. Uh, so I can always keep one of these in my uh, toolbox with me. So if I'm at a, a one a, a truck and uh, RC truck and construction event and one breaks, you know, a hot glue gun and probably 10 or 15 minutes, I can have it swapped out. Let's take the screw out, then that will free that um, servo from the bracket. So like, actually, I gotta run that the other way. Free it from the bracket, pull the hot glue out. Put a new one in so i'm gonna go ahead and we'll get that screwed into place so i'll glue it in and screw it in All right, so you can see I got the screws in there holding this bracket in, and I'm just kind of using a, a screwdriver to kind of keep this servo in there tight for right now, just to make sure I've got the placement right. I want to make sure, you know, I don't really care how far it dumps forward. It's, my limit is the limit on the uh, servo for that. Servo for that. If I really wanted more, I can get another servo with more range. This I believe is a 90 degree servo. Um, and so when I was pulling it up, I was getting it to come all the way back, it's being a little fidgety now. I wonder if I just don't have the, uh... there we go. It's coming all the way back to its retracted position. So I'm happy with that. And then it's dumping, you know, that is more than enough for dumping. So, nope, I'm pretty happy with that. It's basically all the way back. So I'm going to shut this off before I do anything. Before I... Okay get this out of my way and now I want to add a screw to keep the servo right there indexed um, you saw in that I went ahead and trimmed that off and this wire is just going to come back and I'm going to use my Dremel to Dremel out those cavities in there which will weaken a little bit but I'm thinking this is actually a pretty strong uh, thick plastic on the side anyways so I'm not going to take I'm only going to take it enough out so it can be flushed and then I'll turn my hot, my hot glue on hot glue gun on and fill that back in. I may, however, need to add an extension to this because I don't think this will be long enough to come all the way back up in there. You know, if I just went straight over to the receiver, it'd be fine, but then I see a wire hanging out and I'd really like to hide this all the way back up in there. So I have some 12 inch, 12 inch extensions, which would be a little long, uh, but I'll use those um, because I really don't want to have to modify this wire. So if I have to swap it out, I want to make it a fairly easy swap. So I'll probably just use the servo extension. I got a 12 inch now before this project is all done. I'll probably go to my hobby shop and pick up like a six inch one because so I don't have to have, I want to have as little wire in there as possible. Um, and actually I'm just noticing this is already recessed. If I lay this flat, I might not have to dribble much out at all. That fits in there pretty good and the colors kind of match. 
It's not bad. I'm probably going to uh, put hot glue behind it and let that stick to it. I might, uh, yeah, that's not bad. That fits in there pretty close. I'll put a blob on the back there to keep it down in there. So that being said, we can handle that. Now it's time to almost have to kind of push this, put this uh, halfway back together so I can see how I'm gonna do the main lifting servo. Let's get my power leads out of the way. I know I mentioned in other videos, but I do have a uh, 12 amp or 12 volt power supply that has settings for three volts, four and a half volts, six volts, nine and 12. So when I, um, before this is all said and done, you know, I'm gonna have a 2S LiPo in here. This servo uh, maxes out at six volts. So if I put 7.4 volts, this servo, they fry. <laughs> you get about two rotations out of them, then little smoke starts coming out of them. So I'm gonna have to uh, do something about my power management on this. In most of my other builds, I had an ESC. You know, I had something that could, will regulate power to the receiver, uh, let me get to six volts. Uh, in this scenario, I'm not using an ESC, I'm using all servos. So I will have to figure that into my power management plan, uh, which we'll do before this is all said and done. Obviously, we're gonna put a, a toggle switch on here. I've used those really big ones in the past, and I'll probably pop another one down here in the middle because there's a cavity right there in the middle. Uh, so we're obviously gonna have a toggle switch for turning this on and off. Uh, the lights will be hooked into it, but I'm gonna have to get a power regulator, um, which is, Kind of disappointing because I really want all 7.4 volts going to the two main servos. Um, we'll see. I'll figure it out. I've got a couple step down converters. I might just regulate power going to the one. So let's get cracking. Let me put the screw in here first before I before I forget. Drill a little pilot hole. You may or may not have noticed I have one of these little hand drills, which are extremely beneficial for small stuff. These small bits are too big and you need more control when you're doing small stuff like this. Um, and you also may notice I was cutting my screws down. These are the smallest screws I have, but they're a half inch long. Uh, they came with some servos. I always save my servo screws because you never know when you're gonna need them. So I just take this into my uh, uh, needle nose, the cutter's part on it and trim that down so it doesn't stick out real far. And now I can put this in there. That servo's mounted pretty clean. I'm really happy with the way that looks. You don't see anything from the front. Uh, even if it's tipped, all you see is kind of that black plate. And in the back, I may or may not spray paint that. For right now, I'm gonna leave it unpainted so you can see what we've done. But now it's time to get this going so let's put this work on putting this back together and figure out what we're gonna do next all right so I got the uh, wires uh, hot glued in to kind of hold them out of the way so the uh, servo for the bucket tilt is the bucket dump is done it's so now in looking at the lift I swear that these uh, Tinka Konka <laughs> whatever that word is that Chinese word is I swear them and Bruder like got together and uh, planned this out for me so if I feed this up from the bottom feed my wire up inside this hole right on top and pull that up inside there then I'll feed it down this other hole to go by the servo wires for the front three uh, and you also notice if you're looking here uh, the servos I used in the D11 build. Um, I had some more here, so I went ahead and modified them to continuous rotation. Uh, if you want to see how to modify these style servos to continuous rotation, go ahead and click right here, and I'll link to that video. But these I modified con for continuous rotation. This one I just left standard. It's got about a 90 degree uh, bend. But if you'll look, this servo just absolutely fits perfect right up there slides right there uh, this hole is big enough that these um, tabs come up but not so big uh, well it comes up big enough but it's not too big that it fall all the way slides through I'm pushing pressure up here and it just sits in there nice perfectly square so what I'm gonna do is on this bottom side is I'm 3d printing a little bracket now 
that's just gonna fit right inside there. And so I'll slide this out, I'll put a screw in here and a screw in here, slide it in off that box, and I'm gonna put two screws right down here to hold the servo in place. And as long as you hold it up, it's not gonna twist or rotate. Um, or at least that's my plan. You can see I put a servo horn on there, that arm is coming off. I do have to do a little bit of trimming. If you look down inside here, there's, uh, right behind this servo, there's a little rib I need to trim off. And then I need to open up a cavity here in front. Originally, I was gonna try to figure out a way to hook to this uh, existing arm that's already there, but it's kind of injection molded and it's hot. If it was hollow that I could stick a rod through, I certainly would have, but it's not. So I've got some 440 all thread. So this size four thread with 40 threads per inch. I've got a couple inches of this. I'm gonna use some of this with some of these um, like rod ends. So I'll use two of these rod ends, one to hook to the servo arm, and then the other, I'm gonna drill a hole in the top of this arm here and there and run this across right in front of it. And then this other arm or rod end is gonna slide on here I'll put a couple nuts to keep it centered, and this is gonna go right through here. And so this servo will raise that and lower that. Uh, so pretty easy installation, one 3D printed part to hold that servo in place, some 440 all thread rod, two holes, a handful of nuts, um, and doing some grinding to open this up, and that should be our servo lift. So I'm gonna do a little bit of uh, cutting and drilling and open it up, and then we should be able to go. So I'm going to do that right now. So we're gonna open this up top first, and just so I don't damage these arms, I'm gonna pop these arms off. So that can come off like that. Pry that off there, pry that off there. And then these things about had it with these gray things. They'll look good when it's done, but they're annoying right now. So I'm gonna open this up here as far forward as I really need to, it should be about right about to that line. So I'm just gonna open this cabinet up here. I'm gonna kind of leave that attached to try to keep some stru structural strength in here. I guess once I cut that, there's not gonna be much strength left, so. And I guess whatever strength I lose here, I've still got this clipping in. Uh, we will need to cut a cavity out of there for this. I'm hoping to just cut it out of this black part and leave this yellow part intact so that can still act as some strength for this thing, holding it together. We'll see if that's gonna be able, oh wait, I got that backwards on. Yeah, I got that backwards. So I'll have to cut out um, in that black some and in this yellow some but I'm hoping to leave at least this in the front to give it, keep it some of its structural strength. So now that I've got that cavity opened up, I do need to trim that out a little bit, or I might just trim that arm down. Let's put that right back in there and see. Again, I've not done one of these before, so this is new. But overall, I'm really happy with how easy this has gone. I say that, I'm gonna run into a major roadblock here pretty shortly. So let me uh, plug this back in, turn this on. Now if I'm holding it up in there, we're gonna see some interference right there. But I think that arm is gonna be too long as it is. I'm gonna just cut that arm down a little bit. So I had already cut one hole off because it was kind of long. This is a kind of a longer heavy duty one. I'm gonna go and cut one more hole off. And now let's try that. Oops. Flip this around. Get these other wires out of my way.
and that seems to clear. We're rubbing a little bit on this rib right there. I'm just gonna take the file and file that down a little bit. That seems pretty good. So that's the maximum lift up, which I don't think we're gonna be going that high. So let me just file that down a little bit. I like that. Like I said, by keeping this up inside that housing, this kind of gets rid of some of that twist in the servo. Now we are catching right there. I need to file that down just a little more so we don't catch like that in the future. Yeah, we're, we're just barely hitting it off the bottom. But I like it. That's gonna be our lift. So I gotta put the rod in. And, and then make some linkage. So let's get that out of the way. Let's get that down there. Do just a little bit more filing. Okay, now I will, um, need to get a nut on it on each outside. So right about there. And this small threaded rod, now this is a little bit thicker so it won't cut nearly as easy, but these cutters on the, you know, those work all right. So there's my rod for that once I get the nuts in I'll grind that smooth and I need to pick up some I have cat yellow paint but this is a little bit more orange or more yellowish than cat yet true cat yellow so I've been trying to having trouble finding a spray paint that matches this yellow because I got to touch some stuff touch up some stuff on my on my d5 as well so once I find the right paint we'll get that touched up I'm gonna get some nuts Clean these threads up a little bit. I got some paint and stuff in these threads. Uh, I guess in the meantime, I can go ahead and let me mark out my holes. So I'm just gonna come directly in between there and there. So. I'll line that up there. Now I'm gonna get my, let's go down about that much. It doesn't matter as long as it's the same on both sides. So I use my mic to make a, a mark. And if I haven't learned before, start with a smaller pilot hole. I would say one of these days I'm gonna clean up my desk, but you guys have probably seen enough videos to know that ain't gonna happen. If I cleaned it, I just wouldn't be able to find anything. 
what you know after watching these videos, I can never find anything anyways. So, I should clean it. And now we'll put a little bigger size on there. Perfect. I should say perfect. I haven't put the thread in yet. Not perfect. Close enough though. So that thread's in there. I'll put a couple nuts in there to hold that, uh, to hold this rod end in place. And then I'm going to start to make a. Uh, start to make a rod in for coming off that servo. So let me do that. All right, so here it is put back together. Um, we got the uh, servo installed. I did make a mistake. I was cutting out the material for this arm and I ended up cutting this away and now this servo can move a little bit. So what I was boasting on how it fit so perfectly, I cut it away. So I will need to make a bracket to kind of hold this upper arm a little bit more sturdy so I've got it held in at the bottom but I do need to make a bracket held on the top here um, so and then I also have to put this in and open this up to where that's gonna run but I got the like I said the higher speed uh, rotation of servos in I had three 3d printed uh, some sprockets in black I changed the offset a little bit for these sprockets and so I'll have basically two different sprockets designed uh, I'll just have them labeled like sprocket one, sprocket two, and the difference is the offset. So if you're building one of these and your servos might be different, I'll have a couple different sprockets options, but you could also shim it out if the others, yeah, whatever. So um, I don't have any power management in here yet to, cause the micro servo, servo is only, um, needs to be under six volts. So I just have my um, uh, power supply set to four and a half volts and have it in here, but we have, forward reverse left right um these seem a little slow but again i'm half voltage so once i up that up that voltage actually i can put these at six volts let me up that to six so already right there even at six volts we're a lot faster than we were before and now we also have our lift control uh, because i don't have the clip top uh brace in here yet this one uh, kind of arm doesn't want to pop off if I hit it too hard if I hold this down here You can also see I also put a mix in here So I turned it I turned a third mix on so mix one and two are for the tracks mix three uh, Channel three the main up and down is the master and channel four the bucket tilt is the slave And I just have them at 50% and 50% actually we'll just go through that right now So hold down to go to setup We'll go down to mix and mix one, two, three. So master is channel three, slave is channel four, positive and negative mix are both at 50%. Once you get those set, long press the cancel to save it. And so now, as I raise this up, you'll see this bucket is basically moving to stay level. So it just sends a little extra signal to this one while this one's running. And then if you want to dump it, you can dump it or curl it back, you can curl it back. So I'm really anxious to uh, get into some material and play with this. Um, so this is gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I got a batter here. Um, I plan on using this uh, 2S 800 amp hour battery that will slide down in front. I'm gonna put the receiver I'll have to take this apart again. The receiver should be able to fit right in here between the uh, the two drive servos and the lifting servo. So there's plenty of room down there. There's also a little bit of room uh, in the back here. So I may even put it in the back, but the receiver will put down here. And then I'm gonna make it so the cab will come off fairly easily, just kind of pop it off to be able to get to the battery. <clears throat> so, uh, and we will need to add a couple LED lights to this. So I'll probably leave this for finishing up part two of this video series. So like I said, we got the lift, we got the bucket tilt in here. And then in part three, we'll just be the cleanup. We'll get the LED lights in there. Uh, I'll have the power management by then. And uh, we'll get a switch in there to turn it on and off. 
and there's a few little cleanup things I need to do. But I did go ahead and cut this out. So if I want to swap servos, I can just take the, the belt off and take the take the Phillips, screwdri Phillips screws out and not have to pull the housing apart. So I did that on both sides so I can get to those. It makes that pretty easily. It makes that pretty easy. But again, really happy with the way this turned out. Uh, pretty responsive. Uh, and I really like, I don't know if it's gonna be powerful enough, but this micro servo was very easy to install. Very little uh, work needed to be done to get that fit in there. And if it breaks, I can change it out pretty easily. Or if it's not strong enough, I might be able to find a higher torque uh, micro servo and just be able to fit right in this place. Um, in the third video, I'll show how we clean up and making this bracket to hold this in place as well. But I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this so far and thank you very much. If you, uh, if you do like it, drop a like just so I know if I'm doing it right or eh, whatever, who cares? <laughs> this isn't going to be a career for me. Uh, I just use this YouTube for fun. If someday I'm ever to be monetized, it is just going to go right back into buying more stuff for videos because we know there's not enough money in this small little market to get rich on YouTube here. But uh, I enjoy, I really enjoy building these and uh, I have more fun building than actually running them. So I just get to share my passion a little bit. So you guys have a good evening.